this video will cover the steps to perform a forced reload for the following products and products via scan tool version 5.1 using the manual mode method. Uh, the Tsunami QB MP820 uh, series and the Tsunami QB MP830 uh, series. Note this feature is designed for the QB MP820 um, series radios that uh, the model number will not work if the bootloader version in the 820 series uh, is older than 1.0.8 and the serial number uh, is going to be lower than 16TT18. Okay, that means that it was built prior to week 18, 2016. Okay, also uh, this feature is designed for QBMP830 radios uh, where the bootloader version is uh, 2.6 uh, or higher. For units that do not fall under the above mentioned notes, uh, please contact Proxim Technical Support for assistance. Uh, note, in order for scan tool uh, version 5.1 to function, WinCap must be installed. And uh, as for the reset works at the bootloader level, VLAN configuration will not impact the procedure. A few more uh, notes. The Proxim radios must be directly connected to the PC's NIC interface. Uh, it cannot be connected to a switch, to a router, or anything like that. Uh, if you do have it connected to a switch, to a router, uh, it, the function is not going to uh, work. Uh, the NIC must have a static IP address of 169.254.128.133. Uh, with a 24-bit mask. If it's any other IP, the process is going to fail. Uh, the PC's firewall must be disabled. Okay. Uh, UDP port uh, 15,000 must be open. Okay. If it's not open, then uh, the scan tool is going to fail. All right. All right. Uh, also, when resetting a QB10100 back to factory defaults, both radios revert back to endpoint A. Uh, to reestablish uh, RF link, the far end unit will need to be changed to endpoint B. Also, when resetting a, a QB9100 back to factory defaults, radio mode does not change. Uh, the near radio will remain as endpoint A, and the far radio will remain as endpoint B. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so as mentioned, there's several things that need to be done first. Number one is that you have to have a static IP address on your NIC. Uh, 169.254.128.133. It has to be that .133 because that is what the uh, radio is looking for on the bootloader side. Okay, number two, we have to make sure that the firewall is disabled. Okay, very important that we have the firewall disabled. Okay, so let's go ahead and close all these. And number three, okay, uh, mention that WinPCAP has to be installed. So when you don't have WinPCAP installed and you run the scan tool for the first time, this is the message that you're going to see, okay? So after you install WinPCAP, and then you could go ahead and start the... Uh, start the scan tool. All right, one last uh, one last bit. Uh, you have to be in admin mode, administrator mode, for the reset reload function to work. So uh, I guess there's two ways you could do it. You could right click and then just go to run as admin. Um, what I do is I just go to kind of properties, go down to compatibility, and uh, just go ahead and do run this program as administrator applying okay so that way you don't have to um, go through that uh, right click all the time so now when you press on it you're gonna get this okay and here we are go ahead and select your NIC uh, your IP address the 133 and click OK okay so let's go ahead and uh, uh, perform a force reload on the 800 series radios the 820s and the 830 radios uh, with scan tool version uh, 5.1 uh, we're going to be using the uh, the manual mode method it's going to be for those radios that uh, do not support the regular 
uh, reload reset. Okay, for that you're going to need a, um, a a firmware upgrade. Okay, so uh, we have a radio up here, and of course we have our uh, reload reset. Okay, so what we're going to do is all the way down here, you're going to see for manual manual mode, we're going to click right over here. So you press it under here. So go ahead and click here. Okay, so um, things that we covered before, uh, device must be directly connected uh, to the PC. Uh, no hubs, switches, routers, anything like that. Uh, you must be able to turn on the radio on or off. Okay, so uh, just have the PoE right next to you. And make sure that the firewall is disabled. Extremely very important. Go ahead and click OK. Okay, so here is our two options. Uh, we uh, the, the reset uh, is going to be covered in a different video. Right, so we're going to go ahead and press reload. Okay, so here we are. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, turn it off. And we're going to go ahead and uh, click OK. And then we're going to go ahead and turn the device on. All right, once again, just make sure that the PoE is next to you. Uh, it's probably going to be the easiest way. So we click OK. Okay, so uh, we're going to wait until the process begins. Okay, so uh, here's going to be the first one. So this is just going to be a series of plugging it out, plugging it in. Just go ahead and follow the sequence. Every time you see a zero, go ahead and follow the instructions. Okay, so at this point then at the bottom over here, um, if there's any issues, um, we would see down here. Okay, so if it failed, it would say fail. If no failures, go ahead and leave this particular window open for about two to three minutes because it takes that long for the firmware to be deleted. After which, go ahead and click close, open up the scan tool, and then go ahead and do another rescan, and the radio should pop up. Okay, so um, as you can see, the radio is back. All right, go ahead and do a quick rescan, and here we are. Right, so the radio has been uh, placed in the force reload state. The image has been deleted. Uh, one of the quickest ways that you could tell, you could see the system name. Um, there is no dashes here. So uh, when there is an image, it would say system dash name. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and uh, upload the firmware. We're going to go ahead and click change. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and enter all this information. All right, uh, here's the uh, IP address of the radio. That's just the one we're going to give it for now. Uh, the subnet mask here is our gateway. Um, I make the gateway the same as uh, your TFTP server slash PC. So in this case, it's going to be dot one thirty three. Here's the image. Okay, so uh, the easiest way is just go ahead, uh, go to where your uh, image is right here. Just uh, right click, go to properties, and just copy this right here and go ahead and paste it and the default is public and after you're done just go ahead and click OK for right now what we do is we're gonna go to the TFTP server so it's gonna reboot right and what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait until we see the uh, the start of the firmware upload and then it's it's pretty quick and then it's going to go ahead and reboot. Okay, so like I said it happens pretty quick. Here's the uh, here's the firmware, and it was um, the transfer was completed. So now the only thing we really need to do is uh, wait until the radio uh, reboots, and that could take up to a minute, minute and a half or so. Okay, so uh, I did a rescan a couple of times, and here we are. The radio is back up. Uh, here it is right here. Uh, like I said before, earlier, you can see here that the system name has a dash here, and you can see it's also capital letters. And when we go ahead and click change, you can see that uh, the TFTP IP server and the image name, those are grayed out. Right? So if they were available, that means the radio is in the force reload state. Uh, right now we are okay, so we could go ahead and cancel out. So now you could go ahead and access the radio uh, via this IP address. Then you could go ahead and make the changes, whatever you want. Um, or if you want to change the IP right away, you could go ahead and click change, change the IP address here. Just make sure that your uh, um, the IP address on your Ethernet card matches the IP address that you're going to give the radio.
about Proxim Wireless and our solutions, please visit us at Proxim.com or follow us at Twitter at Proxim.